This was sent in the corny drive through at gmail.com from Anthony Del Cello. In a recent interview, former WWE creative team member Jimmy Jacobs recounted how Vince McMahon once almost fired one of his writers for not knocking on his office door before coming in with a scripted promo that <laughs> Vince had requested. Jacobs stated that, quote, you are always one weird interaction with Vince away from losing your job. My question is, did Vince react in the same way if you or anybody else in the 90s would enter his office without knocking? If not, what the hell has happened to Vince? Does he secretly despise modern <laughs> members of his creative team? I, You know, I don't... <sighs> I keep hearing all these stories that Vince is so touchy and he just snaps off in an instant. I never saw that Vince. He would snap off, but it wasn't just willy nilly and, you know, over something like that. Um, I mean, under the normal course of things, people knocked on his door, but at the same time, if it was me or Bruce or Jr. or something, we left our stuff in there. We, we just gone to piss. We come back in because we've been in there. Before. I, you know, but I didn't. I never knew Vince, at least in my periphery, to be that fucking touchy and ready to snap at people. Um, if he saw something he didn't like or wanted done over, he might be snippy or snappy. But it wasn't just like some guy bumbles in the back door and he's the Mr. McMahon character instantly to the guy. You know, I don't uh, I didn't see that. But, but, you know, maybe he's as he's. Vince is the kind of guy, he even said this one time in a magazine interview, he was quoted as saying, I believe when I die, I will be, I will die a very miserable, unfulfilled man because there's so many more things I want to do. That's why he never fucking stops working. He never quits, whatever. And maybe now he's just crankier and snippier because he knows he's 20 years shorter of time to do all that shit. He ain't got time to do. And he's like, oh, you motherfucker, you're fucking taking up my time. I don't know. But I, I never, I never had Vince snap at me or uh, anybody that I'm thinking, trying to remember for just any just stupid, insignificant thing like your, you know, your wife at a certain time of the month or whatever. He wasn't that, that snippy. How was his memory back then? Seemed to be pretty good also. You know, I mean, it, 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 Everybody gets older and gets a little forgetful, and he's on the second half of the 70s now. So, you know, that, that can go also. But, I mean, it's not like he could sit there and quote, you know, complete results of Madison Square Garden shows for 1966. But, you know, his memory was pretty good when I was around him. Especially if, if uh, somebody had, had done something in the past that he was not happy with. He had a good memory for that stuff. Well, you know, let me ask you about that, because there's always been a story, or I shouldn't say a story, but this, it's always been said that if someone did a shoot interview or someone went out there and talked about something they had a problem with Vince or said something bad about him, that was the guy he wanted to hire back, as opposed to someone like Bobby Heenan, who never said a bad word about Vince, and Vince never brought him back. You know, you mentioned how he would get mad about certain people doing certain things. Did you ever see any signs of that about him wanting to bring back people who had pissed him off or had said things about him? And what if if he did for that reason, he never said it out loud. Uh, so I never really equate it. Just that's one of those things where it it's it it's a not a stereotype, but a rule of thumb that really just kind of becomes true because people say it over and over because think of all the people that have said bad shit about him and he still hired him back. Uh, and that works both ways. I know. Yes, they said bad shit and still went back, but they said bad shit and he still hired him back. Uh, but it's just like one of the, well, wouldn't you know, it always rains when I get my car washed. Well, wouldn't you know, Vince always hires the ones back that knocked him. I, it, unless somebody prints it out on a piece of paper or hold some video tablet or some type of screen in front of Vince and makes him watch a specific clip or statement or read a transcription of something that ain't very long, I guarantee you Vince McMahon has never seen a comment on a shoot interview in his life of anybody's. Who would be that person to put that in front of him, you think? Well, any stooge wanting to suck up by, you know, taking advantage of somebody else's misery. Or, <laughs> or I mean, you know, I, I I told him I had to. I I've told everybody I showed him the only clip of ECW television he'd ever seen when when he said, "Oh, 
I guess because Bruce was a fan of that horse shit, and then long came shit stain, and the ship was sunk. But for balance, he said, well, you know, they want us to work with the ECW. I said, you hear, here's what was on ECW TV last night, and I put in that thing with Alfonso and Beulah, where Alfonso was run through a razor blade factory and squirting blood everywhere and all the fucking garbage. And I said, this is what you're wanting to fucking, they're wanting you to work with. Just want to make sure we have all sides represented. Uh, so anyway, it, but it depends to work with. Them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, it depends on what's what, what uh, which one of the uh, the Stooge Patrol is wanting to push which agenda, positive or negative. When you were there, who was the biggest Vince Stooge? Um, really, as far as as relaying quotes or what people are saying, he was actually official was Howard Finkel. Because Finkel every morning did the Finkel report. You're aware of this, right? Yes. The Finkel report was it, it basically a, a typed out sheet of however long Howard would get to the office in Stanford, sometimes before 6 a.m. So that because back then, obviously, there was very little internet, and he started before there was internet, he would call the wrestling hotlines when they still had the phone lines, or he subscribed to all the uh, sheets and he and the newsletters and he would transcribe pertinent things or pithy comments about anything that Vince might want to know is being said into what was called the Finkel Report. And he'd type it out and by the time everybody get it got in at 9 o'clock in the morning, the Finkel Report would be in everybody's box and Vince, if he cared to that day, look at it, kind of like Trump's presidential briefings. You know, he would scan through it, but it was just something circulated with the anything that was affecting the WWF or what Vince might want to know about. But I don't think that he particularly gave a shit about anybody's comments as much as just keeping track of the tone of what people were saying about various things. To all the people that say Bruce Pritchard was nothing but an ass kisser, did Bruce, in fact, kiss his ass more than everyone else? That's probably fair. I think just over... Over the length of time that he was there and the the shrinkage of his balls as time went on, um, and, and Bruce will say, well, I got fired a couple of times. But Vince only fired him once. Stephanie fired him the other time. And it, here's a, this is a side note, but I've never understood actually going back somewhere when somebody fires you and you think it's going to work out good again. I don't, I've never done that. It's only, I've gone to the same company with all different people a time or two, but I digress. But anyway, um, but yeah, Jr. would stand up to him uh, ever so often. And Pat never kissed his ass. Pat's just so friendly and nice and, and just cool that, you know, he doesn't get heat with anybody. Um, R Russo blatantly, bla blatantly, blatantly kissed ass, but he wasn't there long enough. Bruce went decades of, high quality puckering. So I think overall, yeah, probably. 